Hello everybody, Wolfie here back with another video. This time a tier list. I haven't done a tier list in a little while and I'm gonna take a different approach. Uh, this time I'm doing a tier list very specifically for the new player base and I'm gonna basically call it my beginner friendly learning curve tier list where I'm basically gonna, I'm, I'm basically gonna mark every character uh, in the sense of how easy I think they are to learn to play just jumping into the game. I'm not even going to go as far as like upgrade paths or optimal builds because chances are if you're just going to pick up the game when it comes out in a couple days, uh, you're not really going to be worrying about builds. You're probably just going to take the default builds and then worry about building later once you get yourself familiarized. So uh, the tiers here in order, S tier. Uh, S tier is going to be for the characters that are just super easy to pick up, really simple to understand. Uh, you don't really need to think too much about like their build or, or kind of how you, uh, how you have to, there's not like a lot of nuances to their abilities. Uh, A tier is going to be characters that very easy to pick up, but they may have one or two things where you kind of have to play around with it a little bit and get kind of a feel for it. Uh, B tier is going to be right in the middle of the road where they're not too complicated, but they're not really that easy either. They're just kind of neutral. Like there may be certain things that are hard to kind of find out until you play them a couple times. C tier are reserved for those that kind of I don't really recommend that you play. Um, but if you really want to give them a shot, it just might take a couple of, of tries, a couple little things before you really get in the groove of it. And then the D tier is the don't play this character do not recommend for beginners um if you're really inclined to play this character by all means please do this is not this is not a video telling you like please don't do this um i'm just saying like for for the benefit of yourself and not getting frustrated especially if you're going to be playing the game for the very first time um i would not recommend picking anyone that i put in d tier I'm gonna make this just a tiny bit quieter Ooh, not that quiet there we go anyway <laughs> sorry about that uh, playing with volume. Anyway, that's the uh, those are the tiers, and of course at the very top I have my goat tier, who I'm going to reserve last, uh, and that's going to be the person I think is probably the easiest character to play in the game. Uh, and we're going to start right with Ashlyn. Um, to be honest, this is this is really hard for me because I've been playing the game for a very long time. Like I played it when it was I played it when it was in alpha, like back in 2014, 2013. Uh, and literally played it almost every day the entire time that it was open. And I even played during the downtime of the private server here and there. So I, this is really hard for me to do because I, I know all of these characters pretty well. Uh, and I, I feel very comfortable with most of them. So I have to really get in the mindset of someone who's brand new. But Ashlyn, I think Ashlyn... I think I'm going to put Ashlyn in my B tier. I think Ashlyn is generally pretty easy to play um the only nuance about her is that she's got upgrades that change her lmb from being melee to ranged and then other than that you kind of have to just position kator like you just have to know how to position kator properly and she's basically like a left mouse button like spam attacker that has other abilities that basically do things by themselves like kator does most of the work so long as kator's alive like you're going to be doing something with ashlyn I don't think that there's that much of a learning curve. I may, I might shift her into A later, but that's where I'm going to start. Uh, Beckett. I think Beckett's going to sit in A. She might be S, kind of, as I go further in. I might switch some of these people. Um, now nah, Beckett's in A. Like, really easy to understand. Um, the grenade might have, like, a couple... You might have a, pro a couple problems with the grenade, like, the way that it gets thrown like it doesn't go as far as you might think it should and you know you have to know how to use your jetpacks and kind of get used to moving you know laterally <laughs> moving with both height and and side to side and kind of figure out how to you know aim things properly doing that all at the same time while also dodging maintaining stamina and like that's that's more game mechanics and less really about the character but with the with the jetpack it does add a little bit of complexity um but generally, I think she's really easy. You know, she's just got guns. You switch guns every now and then. Like, once the clip empties, you switch guns. And that's really all that she needs to do to be successful. She's also got a really forgiving focus because it just charges really fast. And it's such a big area. 
you're it's not hard to figure her out. Uh Charnock. I think the difficulty curve with Charnock relies on the fact that all of his abilities have very high impact and like they they have a very specific use in a very specific case that you kind of need to be constantly aware of. Um I don't think that he's harder, harder than Ashlyn. I'm going to put him in B tier for now. Uh, I might actually end up putting Ashlyn in, in A. But I don't think Ashlyn's easier than Beckett. I think Ashlyn is harder than Beckett. But anyway, Charnock, he's got, you know, it, it's very easy for you to spam every ability if you really wanted to. But it's not super effective to do that because he's got such long cooldowns and all of them have like a really good use because they're all like aoe damage and one of them is his vital escape that's got like a 20 second cooldown i think it's uh pretty detrimental if you use that immediately uh plus he's also kind of big and, and pretty easy to hit so positioning might be kind of hard with him but other than that i don't think he's actually that difficult uh ezrin hmm I kind of want to put Ezrin in the same tier as Charnock. I think he's a little bit harder, but I'm also thinking I want to put Ezrin in C just because he's, it's not immediately obvious uh, that you're supposed to like, <laughs> it's not immediately obvious you're supposed to build souls with LM LMB and then use them with RMB. And like, he's got, he's got like a, his E is a pretty small radius. So it's kind of hard to land. Um, his Q is very like, his Q is very selfish because it lowers like it, it does a bit of damage around people, but it's like all about the self-sustain. It's a very small area of effect because they basically have to be touching him to be damaged by it. And it's not even for damage. So like there there might be some people that are like, oh, I want to use this Q and like rush forward and just do a bunch of damage because they're all clustered together. And that's not what it's for. So like there's kind of a bit of a learning curve with that, too. Um, and his focus is, I mean. I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, ooh, big area of effect focus that gives me a lot of health. Like, that's really fun. And it, it's it's easy to use, but it's also like you're going to have this weird moment of feeling like you're not doing that much with it. And then you realize that it's really all about staying alive and not about actually doing damage because it hardly does any damage at all. Um, I don't know. I, I think you can pick up and, and kind of get better with Ezrin easily. I just don't think it's just I, I don't think it's as easy as these other three so far. Uh, Griselma D tier. <laughs> is Griselma going to be in D tier in every video that I do? Um, I sure hope not. <laughs> but Griselma is really complicated. Like, she looks, she looks super easy to play. But, like, just the, the management of the hands and realizing that you need to actually put them in a proper place. And you can't just, you can't just put them in the middle of the field. And then they're just, you know, doing whatever. Like, they'll last for a couple seconds. They'll do damage. But for the most part, like, she's, uh, for the most part, she's, like, pretty much not doing anything without the hands. And I, I've said this before a couple times. Like, if you don't have hands that are active and doing anything in the fight, you are basically useless. Like, you're a little tickle machine with your little beam or your little slap. And, like, you know, and there's that nuance of being, you know, melee versus range and, and upgrades like Ashlyn. But, you know, there's a whole other nuance of being a zone control character and also being, like, a full support character that requires <laughs> the the AI is more hard to manage. Like the AI is much harder to manage than Ashlyn, and Ashlyn can compensate because she's still kind of useful without Kador. But she's she's obviously not as good without Kador. But Granny needs her hands, or she's worthless. It's and then like there's that, you know. It, it's I don't know. I I I don't think that. It's not that I don't think that she's good. I actually think that she's really complicated for new people. And only people that actually know her ins and outs super well, like in depth, are going to be the ones that will actually shine with Grisella. And even then, I've said before in other tier lists and just other videos in general, like she needs a team to be built around her. And it's just, it, it makes it even harder because you can't just jump in and pick Grisella. You know, it's, I, it, it, she, I, I don't. I don't know. Don't, please don't play Grizama if you're going to be a new play, a new player. Like honestly, please don't. Uh, HK. Let's see. HK. I feel. I feel around the same level of Charnock. Maybe a little bit harder. Cause. HK's HK's abilities are very simple conceptually. It's like, just a spray of bullets that have a bit of a spread. 
you know, at long range. Um, and then a a hit scan just blast of energy in a very thin line and a mortar. Like, you know, th all the abilities sound really simple. I think the complexity of HK is kind of managing how to use your upgrades. And because a lot of a lot of HK's upgrades revolve around the fortify, uh, the fortify feature that he has, that ability. Because there, there are some abilities, there are some abilities and upgrades that really change how those abilities work or just add a lot more to the kit and potential. Um, but you're sacrificing the fact that you have to be immobile and your your field of vision kind of changes slightly when you're turreted up. So it's, you know, it's about the balance of trying to figure out when to actually turret up and when not to. Um, but overall, I don't think that he's actually really hard because the not turning up ever is not going to like hurt you in the long run. Like you, you can still perform exceptional damage output with HK without ever turreting up. But there's that learning curve of knowing when to turret up and when not to and when to unfortify and and, you know, kind of ch like changing your arc and learning the mortar arc. And, and there's little nuances here and there that I think are, are sort of complicated. But as a general picture, broadly looking at him, I don't think he's actually hard to use at all. Uh, Imani, where do I put Imani? Up here? Uh, I, mm. <laughs> this is, this is interesting because I think Imani is extremely easy to play if you know how to aim. And I don't think, I don't think aiming is the game is a, in a game is a character by character thing. I think aiming in the game is just learning how the game functions and just the mechanics of it. Like, if you're not good at shooters, then you're probably not going to be good at Imani. But if you're coming from another shooter or you can pick up shooters really quick or, or similar style games like Overwatch or Paladins or, or others, you know, these team brawlers that are some that are also partially shooter games, like you're going to pick up Imani and be like, oh, I get it. You know, it's really simple. Everything she does is like entirely LMB, like her right mouse button scopes in to make stronger uh, basic attacks, her Q increases the damage of her basic attacks. And then she's got her little bomb for herself to escape when she gets jumped. And it's just really easy. Even her focus, her focus enhances her left mouse button, just makes her, her left mouse buttons like super duper strong. Like everything revolves around the left mouse button and it's super easy. And you're never really punished for using an ability too early, except for the smoke bomb. Like if you use the smoke bomb offensively and then you get jumped by two people, you're, you're probably going to die. But that's, a quick thing that you can overcome just by like one experience of that you're going to realize oh i should probably save that and like that's the only thing complicated about imani um but again if you're not if you're not good with shooters if you're not good with aiming like obviously imani is going to be hard but generally as a character she's not hard to play uh kajir it's hard to it's really hard to gauge kajir because he's not in the game yet i mean he is but he's also like really buggy and not working properly and i don't i don't think he's getting released to the same time that the game's getting released i think he's getting a little i think he's getting released a little bit later uh i think kajir is pretty complicated like i ideally you think you know oh he's got a he's got a skill shot on his q that like if it lands it teleports behind them and like that's a huge gap closer and then he's got this right mouse button charge attack thing that does a little more damage if you charge for longer um, and it's also like a short range dash. So it sounds pretty simple, but he's also got really low health and he's got really long cooldowns. And like, you kind of have to know when to use the clones and how to move properly. Cause the clones behave certain ways. So like, if you're, if you're being super erratic and very obvious, like with your movements, then people are going to notice like which one is the clone and which one is you. And then they're just going to attack you. Um, and I mean, he's a, he's also an assassin, so it's pretty it's pretty common for assassins to have a pretty high learning curve and, and a pretty um, high even just skill floor. So I, I think Kajir is going to be pretty hard. Um, I don't think he's necessarily as low as D tier because I do think that there are other assassins that are harder to play. Um, but definitely bottom of C tier, like borderline D for sure. Uh, Nasus. I mean... I don't know. Again, this is something that you this is something that you learn in the mechanics of the game and less about a character by character thing. The fact that Nasus is melee and really big means that he's 
typically spending a lot of stamina just to get in and out of fights. And that's all about stamina management, and it's that's not specific to Gnosis at all. His kit by himself is super easy to understand. Like a four chain basic attack, a, a spear projectile on his right mouse button, and then a little a little charge attack, and then a speed boost. And then his ult is an AoE like damage. <laughs> that, that's his whole kit. That's all he does. And and it's it's really simple to understand. So the the skill for the skill for Nasus is not specifically about Nasus. It's all about actually playing in the melee stamina management and positioning and and dodging and that's all game mechanics it's not gnosis specific so i i think he's probably i i think these two are probably about tied i'd probably say imani's a little no 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 gnosis gnosis is probably the easiest character to use in the game like let's let's be real here even 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 if you've only been playing the game since the test like and you're gonna be coming in like as a brand new player uh, gnosis is super easy to understand I'm gonna make this a tiny bit quieter. Uh, Margrave. Uh, I'm gonna put Margrave here. I think Margrave's pretty easy. Um, like you kind of the 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 only thing really difficult about him is like the aiming of the E, like the aiming of his leap is sometimes a little wonky because sometimes it just wants to shove you forward even though you're aiming at a higher space or like a further space and it just doesn't do what you want <laughs> and even to this day i'm still like not 100 percent sure how exactly it works um but other than that like very simple kit to understand like all of his upgrades are pretty good so you're not really you're not really punished for going an improper upgrade i, th I think i'm taking that sort of into consideration as well when i put these in the tier list like you're not really you're not thinking too hard about Margrave's upgrades when you first play him because his abilities will just get like his abilities do just enough on their own and they only get better with upgrades. Cause there, there are a couple, there are a couple characters down here where their abilities are fine, but they do a lot better with specific upgrades. And that's part of the learning curve for the character. Um, but generally Margrave is going to perform well and you just, you just kind of have to get used to his long cooldowns and the fact that he's just like really big and easy to hit. But that that's also compensated by the fact that he's got so much health and so much armor. Like the most health and the like tied with the most armor in the game. It's just he's he he's super bulky and and it's it's hard to punish him because even if you make mistakes, you you're still probably doing just enough that you need to do. And if you really need to get out of the way, like you've got defensive capabilities. You know, that that reflect on his right mouse button is so or the deflect on his right mouse button sorry uh is just so useful especially in a game that's kind of softly dominated by the ranged uh in some way shape or form <laughs> yeah he, he's he's easy uh mozu hmm mozu's a hard one i feel like my heart wants to put mozu like here at the top of c but i think also i could put her borderline b I, I think it's going to be another thing where you Mozu play the people that are going to pick up Mozu and learn how to play her are going to quickly realize just how squishy she is. Like she has, she has the lowest health in the game. Like, I mean, there are, there are a couple of people that are tied with 1500 health, but she's, she's among that crew of the 1500 health and 15 armor, like super squishy characters. She's also like surprisingly big. Like her, like her hitbox is surprisingly big for being such a small character. Um, so she's generally like super easy to hit. Um, but it, 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 and sorry, there is one more thing. She also has this weird, like medium to medium long range. So you have to be closer than you think to get the homing projectiles of her, of her magic bolts. And you, you kind of want to be somewhat close. So it's, it's a balance of, um, it's a balance of using the LMB at the right range without fully exposing yourself and then going into the abilities of the q and e like the q and e have very specific purposes you know obviously ones to get away to reposition like perhaps to get onto higher ground with the teleport or just further away from the fight if someone's jumping at you like that's pretty easy to get a grasp of um but the q like you don't want to just drop the q whenever you, you know most a lot of people are probably going to pick up mozu right away and just be like oh i see two enemies like shooting towards my team i'm gonna drop the e like you, you kind of want to the best mozu players are gonna save the vortex 
for very specific moments like when they see an incoming focus or like a you know a a fortified hk mortar comes their way they're gonna save that vortex because there is a small delay but it's pretty like immediate how quick that uh how quickly it activates it's it's i think there's a bit of a learning curve with her as well as her upgrades like there are some upgrades for mozi that are just not good um and you know th they they cater to one specific play style and you kind of have to go all in or nothing like you can't really go half season and, and break uh some of the more optimal uh upgrade paths for mozu it, she's kind of got the <laughs> like all this way or you're kind of worthless all that way or you're kind of worthless not i shouldn't say worthless because she's still going to do damage obviously but like there there there's an optimal way to build her and it's not immediately obvious so i think that's part of the learning curve uh really same thing with oru i might say oru is a little bit tougher just because oru doesn't have an escape i actually might put oru down here um oru is like just very large and very squishy he, he's got a lot more health than mozu so like he's compensated for that but he's also got no escape and he's also got very long cooldowns and slow projectiles like super slow medium range projectiles so you're you're kind of you're kind of forced to be closer than you really want to be and the only way that you can get away from anybody is if you have enough stamina to to sprint away or if you have your focus and get airborne and even then you're not really safe because people can shoot you because the game is the game requires at least two range damage dealers right now just with the with the way that you can play optimally and and kind of you know have enough damage for the team to for the team to win fights so uh i i think a lot of his learning curve is going to be uh just sort of positioning um and and because he doesn't have any escapes that hurts him you know and also the 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 cooldowns his q like the arm time is pretty long and it only hits one person at a time so like each card only hits one person so it only three people getting a hit and that only it, it only works if all three of them hit a different card and then uh, his E is like, it's actually a fairly small radius. And, and with the short delay, it's it's a little bit hard to land uh, unless you uh, kind of practice like continuously with it. But I, I think he, I think he's, I think he's usable. I just don't think he's, I don't recommend him to, to be used. Uh, let's see, Paco. Paco, I want to put here. I feel like Paco... Hmm. Paco is kind of similar to Margrave where like just long cooldowns and then once you have the cooldowns gone you're just kind of using your LMB. The difference is Paco is just as large as Margrave, as Margrave with less health and less armor so he's much more easily punished. Um, and Paco has Paco has a really hard skill shot in the game with the snowball. Th that thing is so hard to land unless you just play him again and again and again uh and it's just like you really have to get used to how the snowball like gravity works with the projectile because it sometimes it feels like it should go further than it does and then it doesn't and then sometimes you know you want it to go pretty far and then it just splats to the ground and and it's <laughs> it's he's he's funny he's a he's a funny little dude um but i i think I think a lot of the learning curve from Paco comes from some of the upgrades as well, because there are some upgrades that really have super high benefits when you combine the free status. Like there, there are, there are plenty of upgrades in this kit where if enemies are frozen, then you get extra benefits like more damage or like you're generating more focus or you're, you know, you're some, something else is going on and not every one of his abilities freeze like at base. Um, I think three of them do, like his RMB and his E and his focus do. But the Q can get an upgrade that uh, does a freeze as well. But that's also committing to one side of the upgrade tree, and and it's, you know, I, I think Paco, I think Paco really relies on a lot of his upgrades. But at the same time, I don't think he's actually super hard to play because a lot of his a lot of his abilities, like a lot of his abilities affect a large area and really help like kind of bridge the cap bridge the gap of being a melee character and he, he he flexes as like this bruiser and like 
control mage type character and sometimes he's tanky and he's really super flexible so like you you're kind of you're kind of not going anywhere wrong when you when you pick paco and, and pick any upgrades but then you know you, you want to be mindful of the long cooldowns and everything uh ramsey i want to put ramsey somewhere like here i think he's a little easy well mm. It's so hard to judge Kajir because he's just not he's not in the game yet. So I, I think he's hard to really figure out. Um, but I, I, I don't think Ramsey's hard as much as he is um, just kind of realizing what you're supposed to do with him. Because, you know, he he has the melee damage tag like he's supposed to be an assassin, but he's also way bulkier than most assassins. Like he has more health and he doesn't have quite the same amount of damage so he's more really like a fighter a lot like Gnosis but Gnosis is a really simple kit and Ramsey does not <laughs> like Ra Ramsey's Ramsey is all around the timing of the dodging you, you really want to kind of get into the mechanics of knowing how the dodges work and considering that that's like I would say a good like 60% of his character, maybe even more, is around the evasion tanking of, of the game. You know, using your using your actual dodges <coughs> and your and your right mouse button dodges to avoid as much as you can and then just kind of be a nuisance. So I think learning that and you know, I did say earlier, like there are there are certain things I'm trying not to judge as far as game mechanics, but when the game mechanic revolves around most of your character, I think that's I th I think that's you know certain reason to judge that way. But overall, I don't think he's I don't think he's hard. I do think that he has a pretty rough learning curve. Uh, you know what? I'm actually gonna end up putting him maybe here. I think I'm actually gonna put. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna put Ezrin up here too. I think Ezrin's not as hard as maybe I initially said that he was. Maybe like here. I'll I'll go over it. <laughs> I'll I'll come back to it. Um, Roland. Sorry, <laughs> I almost said Rucker, and I was like, nope, that's Roland. Uh Roland. Mm. I just did the hero basics for Roland. Uh, as as of recording this. I don't think Roland is hard. Um, I do think people are going to be somewhat frustrated by the fact that he's only got 1750 health and he wants to be <laughs> he wants to be like almost point blank with his attacks because he's got a shotgun and that's his only weapon. Um, but a lot of his upgrades kind of a lot of his upgrades kind of work themselves into just making everything better and you're always doing damage. And the uh, the attack drone really helps with the potential of like not getting caught by surprise because it's immediately going to detect that something's nearby and start attacking it, even if it's behind you. Like the attack drone is going to be like, oh, wait over there. And then, you know, you're you're not ever going to really get flanked. And if anyone comes like super close to you, you're going to just destroy them. Um, like if if you're if you're an assassin and you don't get the jump first on him, like he's gonna blast one LMB and your health's gonna chunk down by like a third. Um and if you're like a big meat wall like Margrave or, or Nasus, like he's gonna chunk you too because he doesn't have to be quite close range for all of those bullets to hit, and all of those bullets are gonna do a ton of damage. Um So generally I think he's pretty easy to play and understand. Um I think the learning curve is again going to be about positioning, but even then, like that's kind of meh. I I don't I don't know. I don't think he's yeah he's probably right there, probably around the same level as Beckett, because Beckett's like one thing is the jetpack and like the grenade arc, and his is just like positioning and like the the grappling hook timing, and you know kind of kind of learning when to use the attract. Uh, the attack drone because the attack drone is such a weird ability um but anyway i i think he's probably sitting there uh rutger mm, i used to think rutger was a pretty hard character i don't think that he's really hard anymore but i do think that he does take a bit more skill than people think just because 
just because it's all about the shield management um and there are certain upgrades that are kind of not super great with Rutger, so you really have to kind of have an optimal build. I don't want to say he's, I don't want to say he's D, D tier, but I think he's pretty close. Like he's probably, he's probably the most difficult like frontliner slash tank in the game, like for sure. Um, because his, like with his right mouse button, it's pretty short range. He's also immobile, and it's easy to interrupt because it's like super big and and very easy to see um his e has a pretty short range and it's hard to kind of place properly like without trying again and again and sometimes you end up blocking your allies and the enemy escapes and then you have to remember that you can bring the wall down like immediately you don't have to wait for it to expire i mean honestly gosh i i might put him in d tier i i don't think he's i don't think he's harder than griselma um but like if you're not a good Rucker, it's going to show immediately. I, I think Rucker has a pretty high learning curve. Like, his Q is very forgiving because he's invincible while he's up the ground. But it's also a really long cooldown, as is his wall, as is his right mouse button. Like, his right mouse button is like a 10 second cooldown, I think. And that's that's kind of crazy for a right mouse button guy. I don't, I don't think anyone else has a right mouse button that's that long, except for maybe Margrave, like if he holds, and, and Paco Snowball. So it's yeah yeah but that's that's kind of the same thing I said about them like if if you use these two's abilities like you're still kind of doing something without them but to to various you know levels and, and degrees but if you don't have any cooldowns with uh if you don't have any cooldowns with Rutger and you're not having any shield you're literally sitting there with a thousand health and just a, a dream because you're also big and you're pretty you're you're big and you're pretty easy to hit. And since you're forced to be melee, I think that's also part of the uh, the uh, learning curve. So yeah, I'm going to put him here. I've talked myself into it. Uh, Sven. I think Sven is pretty easy. <laughs> I, I don't think he's easier than Amani. Um, I think Sven is super easy because... All of his abilities have the same trajectory. Like, all of his basic abilities follow the exact same arc. Like, all the potions will fly the exact same way. Wherever you aim them, they're going to go the same distance, the same speed. They affect mostly the same area. Like, all of them. Um, so that alone kind of gives him ease of access. Because you're not you're not having to worry about learning, like, how far and how fast each ability goes. They, they're all the same. Um... He also just has like the perfect tools to help the team. Like his right mouse button makes the team do more damage because the enemies have less armor. His Q is like the best escape in the game. It's the only ability that gives a super jump as a base level and like the upgrades make it even better. Uh, Sven, no matter what upgrades you take, like he's going to be doing something. He's going to be doing a lot of healing or cleansing. Uh, his focus is stupid like, and super big and, and it goes super fast and it lasts a minimum of two seconds. Like Sven, Sven's a super easy character. And he's also super impactful, which is why it's so frustrating because he's he's amazing and he's really simple to pick up. And like there's little nuances here and there. Like obviously if a Sven is not <coughs> up to par as like a professional player like of course you're going to notice that but it's not really that hard to figure out what his abilities do and how they work and and just jumping into solo queue especially like uh, having a Sven is a godsend for your team it just seriously um let's go on to team at now i really feel like team at plays the game for you i i i don't think she's as hard as Sven. i think she's probably borderline the same as beckett but i think Team at's just easier because Team at's further range. Um her right mouse button her right mouse button homes in and burns and does a lot of damage. Her she has the best escape in the game, like the the the, the best self-peel escape in the game, because you just fly so fast and immediately, and you you're like above the ground, so melee can't reach you. And then her focus is just using LMB and RMB at the same time. Which is easy because the LMB is just a big blast <coughs> and it's hit scan and the RMB is just fire at people and they're super fast auto locking homing missiles. Um, I think the only like learning curve about her is that the the E is a bit shorter range and slower than you might think. 
And like, you know, you obviously have to be able to aim to, to play her. Uh, but she just, she's so forgiving. She's also got like, I think she has 1700 health. She might have 1800. She's like, she's healthy for no reason. And and she's not armored. I did think for a while that she was armored, but she's only got fifteen armor. So at least she at least there's that going for her. Um, but she's she's super easy to pick up and play, and she's just also does so much damage. Like you're you're not gonna notice how uh, you're not gonna notice a bad teammate player unless they're just not hitting you, because teammate just does tons of damage. Uh, trip. Let's put trip down here. Uh, do I think Trip is harder than Griselma? Mm, actually, I might. I might think Trip is harder than Griselma. Um, Trip is Trip's an assassin, so it's pretty easy to understand why she's down here just off of that. Um, but Trip is also incredibly squishy, and she's only she's only mobile vertically as opposed to the other two like main assassins in the game that have vertical movement as well. Um, but Trip also, she has a, she has this thing with very long cooldowns and all of them are extremely important because you're going to use either her Q or E to get in and do your initial burst, or you're going to use your Q or E to get out. And if you use both of them for the, if you use both of them for the initial engagement, you're basically sentencing yourself to die unless that person is completely by themselves, in which case like that perfectly makes sense. Um. But like in in a coordinated team, like in a in a group setting, Trip is hard to pull off because she's really easy to jump onto. And she does have very specific upgrade paths that if you mess up or like if you don't devote yourself a certain way, like she will get punished for it. And and even even when you do end up taking those upgrades, if you don't take them at a point where you need them, like there are a ton of trip upgrades around the four to six range where she needs like all of them and you have to choose which ones that you want in, in the right order, depending on what's going on in the game or else like you're destined to fail. <laughs> and if you're if you're not getting kills with trip, like you're basically worthless because she can't skirmish. She's got no defensive capability whatsoever, aside from like one upgrade that deflects while she's sliding. But why? Why would you get that? Um, her, I will say, her focus is pretty forgiving. Like, if if you're if you're point blank or even like that short range, you're probably gonna hit every time. Um, but longer than that, it is actually a skill shot, and it's surprisingly narrow. Same with her right mouse button. Like point blank, pretty easy to hit, but. If you're if they're far, like those will miss pretty easily. They're extremely narrow, small daggers. Um, so I yeah, I th I think she's pretty hard. Um, but I've seen some really dang good trip players, and let me tell you, like man, they, they are they are a problem. Chip is really strong, but she's also really hard to play. So I think that's why I think that's why she's okay in the state she is. Um, Taito Taito's pretty easy. Um, I want to put Taito around the same place as Kajir. I think Taito is more easy to forgive because he has, he's got a little more health than the typical assassin. I think he's got 1700. Um, but he's also like extremely mobile. Um, his abilities are super easy to understand. And, uh, sometimes they're a little hard to land, especially the right mouse button. Cause you kind of have to remember that it lunges you forward from where you land so you don't want to you don't want to land on them you want to land like kind of in front of where they're going and, and once you play him you might like figure that out um as you as you go it's it's not hard but he he's got he's got easy to understand abilities with relatively low cooldowns he's extremely mobile he's fast he does he does okay damage um and he's not like super crazy reliant on his upgrades. Like there might be two or three where you probably should take as early as possible. But once you have them, like you're pretty set and you're able to do your job pretty well. Um, and I think Taito can flex a little more closer to a skirmisher than than Trip can. Not as much as uh, another character we'll get to very shortly. <laughs> not as much as as that one. But um, I think relatively, like he's pretty easy to learn. Oh, Vadasi. This is probably the hardest one to judge. Because 
again, conceptually, she's super easy. Like, she's a heal bot. It's it's super easy to understand that you summon orbs and then you use those orbs and your other abilities do other things. Like, super easy to understand. I think the complexity comes from the fact that Vadasi needs to have the health management. Like, you need to be on top of your health management because most of your abilities really don't do anything at all without orbs. Like, your healing is still okay, but it's way better if you have at least one orb active. Um, but if you summon multiple orbs, you're chunking yourself for a lot of damage. Like, it, like uh, so much damage without the specific upgrades or that one talent point. I think it's around like 700 damage to yourself when you're when your maximum health is like 1900, I think, or something like that. It, she's just like she chunks herself for so much if you summon all three orbs and you really have to be aware of what uh what abilities you're using and, and when to uh, use them. Otherwise, you're just kind of you're kind of setting yourself up to be just blasted from the back by an assassin or just shot at by three different people because you're at half or lower health at all times and you really have to not do that i also think of, i thought uh i also think of vadasi has uh, a lot of upgrades that are required for her to do well but once you reach level five you basically have everything and then from there it's just kind of pick or choose your own personal preferences um but conceptually as a character i don't think she's hard i think once you have the health expending learning curve i think she's actually extremely easy um and it, normally that means i would only put her in a tier but i think it's actually more detrimental to her um also that she's really short range because she has beams like her her healing beam and damage beam are pretty short range like medium short range so you're also kind of in the forefront uh, of fights most of the time let's see Vodin. uh Vodin's pretty easy I feel like Vodin maybe belongs here. Do I think he's easier than Roland? Probably not. Or no, wait, this is harder. I do think he's harder than Roland. Um, yeah, I, I think Vodin, I think Vodin's only real thing is being able to aim, which is not really, I mean, it's sort of character specific to him because he doesn't have a hit scan projectile. It actually, you do have to aim like most of these other shooters, uh, like Imani, Tmat, Beckett, Roland, like a lot of these other shooters have hit scan attacks, uh, and Vodin does not. But once you kind of learn that, it's pretty simple. Like he's got a pretty simple kit. It's just you know arrows, and then there's a poison field, and if you fire arrows through the poison field or while you're standing in the poison field, they'll do poison. And then he's got a invisibility clone kind of sends one clone that way and you go another way and then his little healing pool it, it's it's pretty easy like i think the hardest thing about Vodin is knowing when to use your clone and kind of how to move properly with the clone because you know good players are gonna good players are gonna recognize immediately like which way you're going so you kind of have to do mind games um you know th there's there's times where you want to follow the clone or kind of go side by side with the clone or opposite sides of the clone but other than that, I think he's actually pretty simple. Like once you get the aiming down, he's a pretty simple, easy to grasp character. Um, a lot of his upgrades are also really good and self-explanatory. So like you don't really need to worry about it that much. So yeah, pick up, pick up Odin if you haven't tried him. He's, he's pretty easy. He's pretty fun. Uh, Wu. Oh, Wu's at the bottom of the list. Wu is the hardest character in the game to play. I've, I, I've on and off played Wu since he was released and there are so many things i just don't understand like the kit on its own is pretty easy to grasp like i i admittedly the kit alone is easy to grasp but there are so many nuances with Wu, with his kit with his playstyle, with his upgrades with like the concept of animation canceling oh my god Wu is Wu is crazy he is so hard to play properly and if you're not playing Wu properly like you're not going to get any kills if you don't land the tongue lash you're basically useless to the team like you you have some upgrades here and there that make you a little more bulky and kind of go for the more brawly bruiser type but 
you're really not doing that much damage if you do that. So you're not really helpful there either. It, you know, like if you don't go, if you don't go a very like straight line path and you don't land your abilities, you don't understand like weaving your abilities with LMB and, and just kind of like dodging and animation canceling and all that stuff. Like, Oh my God, I, I, Wu is Wu is like a nightmare for me to play because those little micromanaging of everything is is nuts. And there are there are a lot of people that are probably gonna watch this video and be like, Wu's super easy, but all those people also play fighting games, and I don't play fighting games. And that's what Wu is well, that's what Wu's kiss is, kit is kind of based around in his playstyle is like the combo fighting games. I've never been good at fighting games. So this might just be personal opinion, but I actually do think Wu is very complicated. Um and probably not for beginners. So, you know, play at your own risk. Um, Zenobia. Zenobia is pretty easy. I want to put Zenobia here. And th this might be a shocker because Zenobia is such short range and she's got really long cooldowns. But she she heals herself with her LMB. So you're kind of forgiving. You're, like you're, you kind of have a little bit of forgiveness with that. And then all of her abilities will apply some sort of way for you to either do more damage or for them to deal less damage to you. So, like, she's really good at 1v1 fights. And then, like, you're going to be doing something to the enemy team and helping your team in the process no matter what you do. Like, no matter what upgrade path you take on, on Zenobia, you're going to be helping your team. I think the learning curve with her is just kind of figuring out... The fact that you're pretty low health, pretty squishy with no mobility, and uh, your cooldowns are very long. And a lot of your cooldowns only hit one person, at least on base level. Like, there's a there's a rightless button upgrade that hits multiple people, and of course the big E can hit multiple people. I think the hardest thing about Zenobia is her focus and when to use that properly. And that, I mean, that could, on its own could be a 10 minute rant. <laughs> Just... I think that's probably the hardest thing about her. Um, I might put her at the bottom of A. Actually, I don't think she's harder than I, I don't. I don't think she's easier than Ashlyn. Um, but yeah, I, I think she's pretty easy to understand. Like, you're, you're going to be doing something with Zenobia no matter what. It's just all about the positioning, which is not Zenobia specific. It's that's a game mechanic. Uh, and finally, Zandora. I want to say Zandora is really easy. But the truth is, is that she's kind of complicated and, and, but I, I don't know. I think she's, I think she's probably about here. I don't think she's hard at all. Like ability is super easy to understand. She's got a melee attack. She's got an upgrade that changes it to a beam attack. And then she's got three auras, like right mouse button increases damage. Uh, Q increases movement speed and E is a cleanse on activate and then a healing aura around her. And those auras extend when she remains in combat. And is, so long as she's hitting and dealing damage with her left mouse button, like those auras will stay. I think the learning curve with her is knowing when to use what abilities when. Because like you don't want to just use all three and then rush in because only one can be active at a time and that and that on its own has its own learning curve but i i don't think that she's hard um and uh, her upgrades are her upgrades are weird <laughs> like i don't know i don't know I, I i have so many mixed feelings about zendora and i said this in the last tier list zendora is super weird and and not good um but she is easy to play and that's kind of what this tier list is for so yeah, I, I think she's about here. I don't think she's complicated. The learning curve is just kind of realizing that only one aura can be active at a time and then noting like which one you want. Do you want to have the damage boost active? Do you want to have the healing active? And she's got 2100 health and 25 armor. So she's also like bulky. And I think she also has a passive. Uh, I think she has a focus upgrade as well that gives her immunity to crits. So like there's a lot of forgiveness for mistakes. Um. But you, you kind of have to realize that she's also very team dependent, like like uh, like Grisama is. But even without that, like she's still super easy to play. And with a couple of the right team members and, and you know, playing properly and grouping up, she's going to be somewhat impactful. But 
you know, there there are better characters, easier characters. Or or sorry, there she's less complicated than than she might seem to be. Uh, but that's it for the ranking. Do I want to move anybody first before I pick my goat? Um I think no, I'm pretty solid with this. Uh I think maybe I think maybe Ezrin's a little easier than I said initially. I might put Ezrin here. And then Paco. Nah, Paco's fine there. Uh let's see. C tier. No, I'm pretty good with this. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my final ranking. Who do I want to pick as my easiest character in the game? I mean, obviously it's gonna be one of these four. Um Hmm. I think the easiest character in the game is Gnosis. I think he's probably the easiest to pick up and to kind of get the grasp of how you're supposed to play the game. Like, super easy kit. Upgrades are all really good. Um and you're, you know, you you, you compensate your you compensate your lack of bulk with high health, and you just do a lot of damage. Um all the abilities flow really well together, and there's not really a lot of nuances about each of any of them. So yeah, I, I think I think Gnosis is probably the easiest to pick up character in the game. Uh, but this is this is the tier list of of the uh, beginner learning curve, so to speak, tier list. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I thought this might have been a shorter one. It turns out I probably ranted longer than I wanted to. Uh, but that is my final ranking. Thank you, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and share and all that jazz. I will see you guys on the next one. Have a good day.